Hi, and welcome to the next tutorial video with PSIM. Today we will be going over the usage of the Motor Control Design Suite. To access the Design Suite, go up to the top bar here and go to Motor Control Design Suite. We'll go over the uh, PMSM with the internal permanent magnets today. There are, of course, other Design Suites available, but we'll use the first one here. Okay, so here we go. We've opened up the design suite and right away we see several things here. First off, to sort of describe what the design suite does is after we define the DC bus, the inverter, the motor, the type of load we have, and the motor controller, PSIM will work and do the calculations to close the control loops and generate a template circuit that is simulatable and of course modifiable uh, to help you get your simulations going quickly and effectively. Okay, so let's start from the beginning here. The DC bus. The DC bus is defined by a minimum DC bus voltage and the operating DC bus voltage. Uh, the minimum DC bus voltage, this is the minimum steady state voltage. This is not a minimum voltage defined by a, a SAG or a or a, a droop or something of that nature. This is the minimum steady state voltage. The inverter is defined by the switching frequency, in this case 10 kilohertz, and the maximum inverted current. The motor is defined by the these parameters here, the stator resistance, the D and Q axis inductance, the back EMF constant. Uh, we define as V peak over 1000 RPM. So this is the peak, open circuit peak voltage when the motor is running at 1000 RPM. So if you have the motor handy, you can run it and, and you can get this number. Or in the data sheet, this number is usually available, or maybe it's defined as the peak stator flux linkage. Uh, and it's defined by this equation here. P being the number of poles, not the po number of pole pairs. So here we are coming to the number of poles here. This is again the number of poles, not the number of pole pairs. If there were two pole pairs, we would have four poles. The moment of inertia. This is defined in kilogram meter squared, and the shaft time constant relates the friction coefficient and the moment of inertia together, um, defined by this equation. So the obviously a larger shaft time constant uh, it makes the friction coefficient smaller. So if you want to have uh, neg negligible friction losses, just make the shaft time constant a, a very large number and uh, it, the friction coefficient will disappear out of the equations. Uh, max torque and max power and max speed are all, all pretty self-explanatory. The load here is going to be 25 newton meters, and we have a moment of inertia here as well, also defined in uh, kilograms per kilogram meter squared. Uh, as with any device in PSIM, you can click on the help function and things will be described right away. So the motor controller, uh, this is defined by uh, several of the top section is defining the sort of controller that PSIM will design for you uh, based on the parameters that you've import imported. And the bottom portion is defining the, uh, the base values for per unit calculations. You can convert all of these to one and everything will be in, in real numbers. Um, and obviously here we're to, defining a base in a, a conversion here between radians per second and RPMs. So this is uh, the top half here. Uh, so current loop sampling frequency we, we've defined as 10 kHz, which is also the same as the switching frequency of the inverter. Usually that's a, a good idea. Uh, the speed loop sampling frequency here is a fifth of the current loop sampling frequency. and uh, you know, there are some general rules of thumbs here if, if motor control design is new to you, or you can put input whichever ones you want. Um, 
currently the motor control design suite will not uh, do an error check for you. So if you put in values that may will make the controller uncontrollable, uh, you'll see what happens in the simulation. You'll see the, a, a non-stable result or a non. When you run the simulation, you'll see that it won't work. Um, so the current loop crosser frequency is a tenth of the actual sampling frequency and the motor speed speed loop crossover here is is a tenth of that and there's some you know if you click on help again there's some general design parameters here that gives you an idea of what to do if this motor control design is new to you um, great so now we've got everything defined we'll just use the, the default values and we just go up here and generate circuit So this dialog box will pop up and we can decide where to save the, the folder. So I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to save it in the temp and I'll call it the motor demo folder. And we'll select that folder. So right away this gets generated. This is a template circuit and it's uh, variable driven, so the parameters that we've inputted and the calculated parameters are now in this parameter file to the left here. We can double click on that and we can see everything that's in here. So the top portion is the parameters that have come from the opening um, design suite. So all those values are now in here. And the bottom half are all the parameters that PSIM has calculated. Um, so it's the, uh, you know, inverter uh, parameters, motor parameters. Uh, and then we get down here and we see that here are the PI gains for the D and Q axis current loops and the speed control loop PI gains. And these, of course, are all uh, now have been calculated based on this top section here. Close that up. So now to discuss the circuit itself, let's zoom out a little bit. So the top half of the circuit here, this is with the defined by the red uh, wiring. This is the power circuit. So we have our DC bus, we have our inverter, we have uh, some current sensing here, and then we have the motor and uh, a speed sensor, and then the load. And then as, uh, as we get down into the, the bottom half here, which is the controller implementation, we can see that it's uh, featuring, let's see if we can zoom in a little bit here, Featuring uh, digital control, so everything has been digitized. So we can see the the phase currents are coming into the uh, the zero order hold, and then we're performing an ABC DQO transformation. And uh, and then you know this information is being used to generate uh, using space vector PWM to generate the gating signals on the end here. So we can see uh, we've implemented max torque per ampere control and there's field weakening control. These are algorithms, are, are built-in control blocks with, with PSIM. So here's the field weakening control. So again, we can see that it's using, it's pulling parameters from the parameter file. And if you have questions or are curious about what each one of these is, just click on help. And then as per normal, the uh, description will pop up. So inside of the speed control block, it's actually a sub-circuit with a digital uh, implementation of a PI uh, controller. Again, also inside of the current control block, it's the IDIQ uh, PI controllers. Everything else is, is uh, just a function block. Those are the only two sub-circuits in this uh, section of the, of the code.
of the uh, of the con of the simulation. So we can simulate this. We haven't edited anything, and we can run this simulation. So we can see this uh, real-time plotter has has popped up with the speed. So there's several things we can plot. Let's plot the speed reference versus the uh, motor speed. So we can see it's in per unit here. Uh, if you remember from the parameter file, the first speed that we wanted to go to was 3000 RPM. So this is the motor heading up towards 3000 RPM, um, oscillating and then coming into towards steady state. We can look at a couple other interesting waveforms like yeah, ID versus the reference and IQ versus the reference. Here are those waveforms. And then we can look at um, maybe the phase currents might be interesting. So here we have those. So we can see the, the results of, of, of the simulation here and it looks like our everything is working nicely. Back to the control circuit. So as I said before, everything is, is modifiable inside of here. Uh, if you have some other sort of, if you want to implement your own algorithm for space vector PWM, you can just take this block out and put in your own. If you want to, if you want to run your own current control or you want to have a different kind of PI controller, you can change that as well. Um, you know, or if you want to put in your own algorithm for field weakening, you can put that in here. Uh, you can change these devices and put in devices from the thermal module if you like and, and then look at switching in conduction losses. One important thing to highlight is changing currently changing variables in, in the parameter file does not cause these values to recalculate. Um, if you change a value here, you are going to have to regenerate the circuit, the control circuit. So if you change the motor, or if you change the DC bus operating, or something of that nature, you will have to go in and rerun the design suite and generate a, a new circuit. Currently, there's no, uh, we do not support a, a refresh in the, in the parameter file. So you'll have to come back to this opening dialog and, and, and put your new values here. Yeah. So one other thing to highlight is since PSIM supports automatic code generation, down at the bottom here, uh, in this disabled circuit, the implementation of this control scheme is available for code generation for the F288, F2833X uh, floating point uh, target uh, DSP from, from Texas Instruments. So you can then enable this code and, and hit code generation. And if you had the hardware sitting there, you could just simply upload this code and you'd have your motor spinning right away. We can, we'll get into the covering of, of the automatic code generation in, in a future tutorial video. Thanks again for watching and check back in future for other tutorial videos. Thank you so much.